Video games can be utter bastards, can't they? So keen are some games to maim, destroy and murder players that they can't even have the decency to wait a few hours to ramp up the difficulty curve, and instead prefer to utterly demoralise and defeat us in the very opening sections. So let's take a look at them. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 8 video games that kill you on the first screen. Number 8. Super Pitfall So if you were to even pass a cursory glance over the Pitfall series, it would become readily apparent that the titles focus on a hefty chunky of spelunky and treasure collecting. Exploration for secrets and riches seems to be baked into the very DNA of these titles, and so players would expect to check every room and route made available to them, right? Well, Super Pitfall, in a rather horrendous ruse, presents to the player a ladder on the first screen that seems to offer a quick drop into the caves below. Well, the end part of that sentence is correct, as it is indeed a quick drop, it's just a shame that it drops you into an insta-kill trap. This is the first screen of the game, something that's meant to be a safe place for players to get used to the controls, but here's the cheeky whippet known as Super Pitfall having a laugh at your expense right away. Cruel. Number 7. Rogue Legacy Rogue Legacy is a wonderful game, isn't it? This 2D roguelike turned heads for all the right reasons thanks to its cutesy art style, challenging gameplay and, of course, its central gimmick of letting you play as the hero's next in line relative should you fall in battle. This can give you a ton of permutations before you've even set foot inside the creepy castle, from being super strong, colorblind, which puts the game in grayscale, and you can even have dementia, where you see enemies and objects that don't actually exist. On top of this, the castle itself is procedurally generated, meaning that it's never the same track twice. So as you can imagine, with a random layout and a random set of traits, sometimes even the first screen of the game can be an utter nightmare. You might not be able to make a jump over death pits, or be so short-sighted that you can't see the drop into the abyss that's right in front of you, or worse still, be so utterly puny that even the first enemy will beat the snot out of you. You better hope you've got good genes, otherwise you're going to end up cacking them on the first room. Number 6. Another World One of the most impressive things about Interplay's 1991 puzzle platformer Another World is that this beautiful, complex, and more importantly brilliant title was made by just one developer. Eric Chahi spent years creating this wonderful slice of sci-fi fun and went on to make the equally luscious Heart of Darkness video game further down the line, a title which also looked like butter wouldn't melt in its mouth thanks to its gorgeous visuals, but beneath the surface couldn't wait to roast the player alive. Take for example the first screen of Another World, which sees protagonist Lester teleported into a strange and rather hostile environment, and the game wastes no time in trying to kill the player. Lester finds himself underwater and must swim to the surface to survive. However, because of the game's murky visuals in this section, it can actually be hard to tell what's going on, where you are, or what indeed you need to do. And if you spend too long trying to get your bearings, you might not even notice that you're not alone in this underwater cove, as tentacles begin rising from the bottom of the bloody screen. As such, it's very possible and pretty likely on your your first playthrough that you'll die here before your adventure even begins. Number 5. Kingsfield 4 The Ancient City The Kingsfield series is one that simply cannot wait to nibble on the player's soul and devour their salty cries of what the f because as you might expect from the developers of Dark Souls, this is a franchise replete with devilishly cruel moments. Some titles literally can't even wait to see you meet your end, and Kingsfield 4 The Ancient City is no exception. In a particularly mean-spirited opening, the player is presented with an opening section containing a lake of lava to the left of them and a little green herb to the right. It doesn't take a genius to know that heading left in this scenario is going to be a bad time for all, but it turns out that heading towards the herb on the ground might also be a rather dumb decision. If you stroll over to pick the wheat, you'll end up plummeting through the floor to the lava below as the walkway collapses on you. You can almost hear from software laughing as you sizzle to a crisp below, can't you? Number 4. Saw the Video Game As you might expect from a franchise centred around killing people in brutal and usually rather unfair ways, Saw the Video Game takes great delight in throwing players right in at the deep end with the very first section centering on trying to escape from the most evil of inventions, the reverse bear trap. Waking up to find a thing that looks like Lisa's braces from The Simpsons strapped to your head would likely make anyone panic, but this is especially stressful for one major reason. The game instructs you to get this bastard device off your noggin using a series of button prompts, but is, well, how to say this gently, not a good game and sometimes the rotating wheel prompt doesn't work properly, resulting in your head exploding like an overripe melon. Yeah, for some players, this opening section was indeed a bloody short one in both senses, as the bear trap snaps shut in a manner sure to make you rage. Even if everything was working properly, the timing of this section is fairly tight, making it very likely to fall prey to another of Jigsaw's deadly traps.
Number 3. Dragon's Lair for the NES Now, If we're being honest, despite the sheer lusciousness of its visuals, the Dragon's Lair arcade experience was a thoroughly cheap one. Well, actually, scratch that, it was a very expensive one because a single wrong move would end in your death and another piece of shrapnel being fed into the cabinet. This title was an absolute hoover attachment for your wallet, and thanks to the vague try-and-see gameplay, you'd likely die without even knowing how to proceed properly. For some reason, this incredulous difficulty was something that the NES port of the game doubled down on, as the opening section was an utter hellscape. As a rather poorly rendered dirk, you had to cross a bridge to enter a castle. However, thanks to bats, falling planks, and a goofy-looking dragon, such a simple task is made almost impossible. What makes this so infuriating is that Dirk has input delay, as well as one of the weirdest jumps in gaming, both leaping too high into enemy fire and also not very far at all, meaning that it was very likely to drop you to your death or get roasted alive. Plus, special shout-out to the final bastard bat that spawns in just as you're about to enter the gate, which could literally kill you just when you thought you were on the upswing. God, just thinking about it makes my blood fizzy. Number 2. Murdered Soul Suspect Now, this one might bend the rules slightly, but you can't argue with the logic that Murdered Soul Suspect offs protagonist Ronan O'Connor in short order. And by that, I mean that he's killed in a cutscene before the game even begins. Like I say, technically this does mean that the player won't actually die on the first screen, but starting the game dead sure does lay out the title's intention pretty clearly. Amusingly, poor old O'Connor even quips to himself, how did I survive that, when looking up at the window that he's just been launched out of. Well, I hate to break it to you, my fine friend, but you didn't survive. Thankfully, being dead doesn't seem to be too much of an issue for the detective, as now he possesses both a deadpan wit and the ability to possess people and phase through walls. It's enough to make you wish for more games to kill you sooner so that you can get access to all these sweet powers. And number one, Home Alone 2 on the NES and SNES. What is it with the NES and Snares games being so thoroughly rough with players? It seems that wherever you look in that back catalogue, you'll find examples of Git good way before Dark Souls was but a twinkle in From Software's eye. These were experiences that didn't just throw you into the deep end, but then told you that the water that you were in was actually petrol before throwing in a lit match and laughing as they walked off. Strangely enough, it always seems to be the games related to pop culture icons that offered up the most extreme moments of difficulty. From The Simpsons utterly bludgeoning you in their NES games through to the the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles making young gamers rage, hell, even Home Alone couldn't resist an attempt to utterly mug the player in its opening moments. In the NES and Snayers versions of Home Alone 2, the game begins with the concierge, who's played by the almighty Tim Curry in the film, chasing Kevin through the hotel. Now, to be clear, there is a lot going on in this game, what with all the guests, staff, and inanimate objects that are trying to kill our young hero, so you might want to take a moment to figure out just what the fresh hell is going on. However, if you take more than a few seconds, Mr. Mr. Curry over here will grab you and treat you to a shocking game over complete with Kevin screaming. It's actually quite terrifying. And there we go, my friends. Those were eight video games that kill you on the first screen. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice. That's Dice with a C, where I do all of my streaming outside of work, and it'd be great to see you over there. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. I hope you're treating yourself well, both mentally and physically, because you deserve all the best things in life, my friend. Yes, you do love happiness and success. You deserve those things, because you're a massive ledge, all right? and do not let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise. I want you to go out there and absolutely smash it today. I believe in you. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.